Hi, welcome to Software Basics. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to enable searching for files and folders within your Google Drive on your Windows PC. So we're in my user directory, which is for my user account. And you can see I have three Google Drive accounts associated with my user account on my PC. If you're wondering as well how I got three Google Drive accounts onto my PC, it's a new feature that's been enabled with Google Drive. I made a video on this, so link will be in the description or you can click on the iCard for more information. So we're gonna use this one for demonstration. Let's just go into it. And then I'm gonna go into this folder for personal stuff. And I just basically want to do a search. So the only folder within that first folder is zero dash junk. If I perform a search, you can see it says no items match your search, which is right here. Obviously that's completely untrue because the folder is in fact in there. Now, why this happens, if we go back to the initial folder we searched and we hold alt and double click, you can see it opens up the properties section or you can just right click and go to properties to open this up. And if we go to the security tab, you can see the only group or username that's been assigned for permission is Kingsley Chamezi. Now this makes sense. The reason why Google Drive does this is because, you know, security flaws. They only want the person who is the user that downloaded the Google Drive to have the permission of the folder and files within that. Now, in order for us to resolve the searching issue, we simply need to add another user called system. Now, the system user is basically what brings all the system functionalities to a particular folder or file. And one of those functionalities is obviously searching for a file or a folder. So to do it is very simple. You just say edit, click add, and then just type in system, press enter, you can see it adds the system. And then you hit apply, it'll run some changes, and then you press OK, and that's all well and good. You're pretty much done there. But the problem with this now is that it will only be assigned to this folder. What if I had 50 folders and files? How would I do it to the rest of them? So in order for us to do that, we would have to go back to the user where our Google Drive account is stored, which is here. And then we do the same, Alt and double click. And then security again. Now this time you can see the system user is actually already there. And Kingsley Chmezi is there. However, administrators is also there. This is generally the default three users that Windows adds to files and folders like this. Now, the problem here is we don't want administrators. We just want Kingsley Chmezi and system. That's it. The reason being is because if we have a family member on the PC as well, and they just happen to be an administrator, they would have the same permissions as you would. So that's why we don't want the administrators group in there. Now, the only problem here is that we can't just simply say edit, click on administrator and hit remove because it will tell us that we can't remove it because this is an inherited permission. That means it's coming from its parent location. Now, if that's a little bit confusing, I guess I'll just show you. So if we go to our local drive, which is in computer, C drive, users. So this would be the parent. If I alt and double click, and then security, you can see it's the same permissions that's in the previous Google Drive folder we just came from. Now, if we actually go into this, you can see it's all the same stuff that's in here. So nothing, nothing is different there. I just went about a different route. So the only way we can just rectify this is by simply disabling the inherited permission from the parent. Now, please understand this part is a little bit confusing for most people, uh, but it's pretty straightforward if you just follow what I do. And if we go to advance, so what we need to do is go to change permissions. Now you can see this says include inheritable permissions from this parent's this object's parent. So that's previously the location I just showed you. So what we're gonna do is just click and disable that. Now it will say add or remove, you'll get a warning. Don't worry about this. We wanna set our own rules. We don't want to follow the parent rules. That's basically what this is saying. So we'll just hit remove and you can see it clears off everything. 
you may be panicking don't worry about that because if you simply hit include inheritable permissions again and you press apply you see it all comes back so don't worry about that so we'll go remove now you may be wondering why don't we just click replace all child object permissions with inher inheritable permissions from this object the reason why again is because if we did that it will add administrator so we want to clear everything and start on our own so now we can just do this and say add so i'm going to add my username if you want to search for your username you can click advance find now and then just double click on your username when you find it then press ok and then it will pop up the permissions for that user or group that you've just added so we want to make sure this folder subfolders and files are selected because that's what we want to affect everything subfolders files folders etc then press full control then press ok you can see you get not inherited don't worry about that at all and now we want to add the system but not the administrator so this time i'm not going to search for it I'm just going to simply type it in press enter and it's going to ask me again the same thing so i'm going to click full control now if you know how to work with ntfs permissions then you can go around changing any of this but let's just keep it plain and simple uh, the system is a user that you can only enter from like a safe boot or something like that so don't worry about that family members wouldn't gain access to it but if you're worried that they would then you can customize these permissions by yourself i will attach a link in the description for where you can read more about ntfs permissions what i'm going to do now is click ok and this time we can say replace so we'll just simply hit apply you're going to get another warning again so if you've used any other permissions before it's going to clear all of that so i haven't i'm just going to say yes and then it's going to run the whole process takes a couple of seconds and once it's done you can just ok ok and ok so now if we check this again you can see it's just those two permissions that are there and if we go within this and then we go here and this time we search for it you can see it finds it so that's pretty much how you resolve this whole issue obviously there's a simple way of doing it which is the first step that i showed you you can do it that way just to add the system go about your business however the way i've just showed you is probably the best way of doing it because you get a little bit more control than what your computer initially assigns so thanks for watching i hope this video helped you out if you have any questions at all regarding probably ntfs permissions all that kind of stuff please leave your comment in the comment section below and of course don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this <laughs>